Welcome grade 12 to business cycles. Uh, the definition of business cycles is given at the bottom of the graph there. Uh, business cycles are periods of increasing and decreasing economic activity. And we can see this on the graph. The, gra the graph increases, decreases, increases. So that's the definition of business cycles. Uh, when there's an increase or a decrease in economic activities. All right, so if we look closely at the graph, the highest point on a business cycle, we can see it there on top is a peak. Highest point of a business cycle is a, uh, a peak when the economy is doing, is doing very, very well. It, it will be at its peak. And then the lowest point of a business cycle will be a trough right there at the bottom. The lowest point of a business cycle is a trough. Then from a peak to a trough, you're going down. That's a downswing. From a peak, the highest point, to the lowest point, you will have a downswing. A downswing is also called a contraction. The contraction phase itself uh, has two parts. First, the economy will experience a recession. And then things will get worse. The economy will experience a depression. Those are the two parts of a contraction. Now, if you're going from the lowest point of the business cycle, the trough, to the highest point, to the peak, now that is an upswing. An upswing is also called the expansion. Now, the economy is expanding. The expansion also has two parts. First, the economy. Remember, the economy was at the bottom. It must first recover. So first we will have a recovery uh, phase as part of the expansion. And then after the economy has recovered, it will prosper. Uh, then we will have a prosperity phase until you reach uh, your peak. And then the business cycle continues again uh, and again. All right. Uh, let's also define the length of a business cycle and the amplitude. The length of the business cycle is the distance from peak to peak, or it could be the distance from trough to trough. All right, uh, so let's look at this business cycle, peak to peak. So if you wanted to, uh, we have two lengths here. The first length, we're going to determine from peak, there's the peak. Remember, we said uh, the length of a business cycle is from peak to peak. So from peak, the first peak to the next peak, uh, we have a distance of 10. That's the first length of a business cycle. But we also have another length from the bottom, the trough, to the next trough. And that length is 7. Okay, so that's the length of the business cycle. What about the amplitude? Now, the amplitude could be a distance from peak to trough. In other words, from the highest point to the lowest point, or it could be the distance from trough to peak, from the lowest point to the highest point. And again, uh, on this graph, we've got two amplitudes. So let's look at the first one. So if you want to go, this is the peak, right? From peak to the trough there at the bottom. First, we must go from peak to the trend line. Remember, this is the trend line. It's not as straightforward as the length of the business cycle. When you calculate the amplitude, you must first go from peak to the trend line, uh, and then you have five. And then from the trend line, you go to the trough. So remember, you're trying to get from the peak to the trough, but you must first go to the trend line, and then from the trend line, you can go to the trough. So from peak to the trend line, we've got a distance of five, and then from the trend line to the trough, we've got a distance of two. So if you add the five and the two, you will find an amplitude of? seven that's the first amplitude but remember we also said you can measure the amplitude again from the trough to the peak all right so if we started at the trough at the bottom here and we want to reach the next peak all right so again we must first go from the uh, trough to the trend line we've got two there and then from the trend line we go to the peak we've got one there so the amplitude would be three moving on okay so we've got four types of business cycles we've got kitchen uh, the business cycle that will last 
between three and five years, the shortest one. And this one is caused by changes in stock. Uh, stock is also called inventory. And then the second type of business cycle will be the juggler. The juggler will last between seven and 11 years. This one is caused by changes in fixed capital investments, right? And um, that one last, as we said, uh, will last between seven and 11 years. The third one is the Kutznet business cycle. That one lasts between 15 and 20 years. And this one is caused by changes in the construction industry. The longest business cycle is the Kondratif business cycle, which lasts between 40 and 60 years. And the conductive business cycle is caused by changes in innovation and technology. If you struggle to remember the order of these uh, types of business cycles, remember this term. Ki, Ju, Kuko. Sounds like a Japanese word. What does it mean? Absolutely nothing. But I mean, if you just memorize the Ki, Ju, Kuko, it could actually re, uh, help you remember that kitchen comes first, then jagla, then kutsnet, then conductive. So then you'll be able to remember the order uh, in which the business cycles, the types of business cycles go. Moving on to the explanations now of business cycles, of which we have two. We've got uh, the endogenous explanation. Endo means inside. So the endogenous explanation of business cycle is also called the Keynesian explanation. The Keynesian explanation. So the endogenous explanation says that business cycles are caused by forces inside the market. Remember, market forces are obviously demand and supply. So business cycles are caused by forces inside the market or by demand and supply. The exogenous explanation on the other hand also called the monetarist explanation says that business cycles are caused by factors outside remember exo means outside so is a prefix for outside so outside the market so in, in other words factors that are not uh, influenced by demand and supplies factors such as weather or technology has got nothing to do with demand and supply all right, now we look at uh, the economic indicators that can be used to focus uh, business cycles. Uh, and we've got four. We've got leading indicators. Uh, these uh, indicators will change before there's an economic activity. Let's say maybe uh, an example of an economic activity would be inflation. All right. So the leading indicators uh, in the economy there will be a change in these indicators before there's a change in inflation, right? The lagging economic indicator, uh, remember we said the leading changes before. Lagging, uh, another word for behind, changes after. Uh, if someone is, be, is lagging or is behind you, they will come after you. So let's say the economic activity would be uh, unemployment, so the lagging indicators would change before there was a change in unemployment. So maybe there is a decrease in unemployment. So the lagging indicators would change after uh, the unemployment has decreased or increased. Coincident indicator, uh, on the other hand, changes at the same time as the economic activity. So let's say, for example, the economic activity is... Uh, GDP growth. So the indicator will change at the same time as the GDP growth. Um, so remember, leading is before, lagging is after, coincident is at the same time. Now, if we combine different indicators into one, let's say we were combining uh, leading, lagging, and the coincident indicator into a single value right into a single value then we would get the composite remember composite means a combination so the combination of uh, different indicators into a single value 
gives you the composite economic indicator. All right, so we're moving on. Okay, we'll stop there for this video. Thank you.